A real gem from Birmingham now on BBC Scotland with Jilly Goulden. Martin's Market, right in the centre of Birmingham, and also to this week's bloodhound, Bora. Every month, this giant empty space is host to an enormous antiques fair, and dealers from all over the world come here to buy. It's only 6.30 in the morning, but already crowds of people are waiting outside to come in. That's both stallholders and customers alike. But before they descend, let's meet this week's teams. Hello, my name's Lindsay Mackay. This is my friend and teammate, Judy McCusker. We're from Isha in Surrey, and we're the red team. I work in further education, and when I have time, I like to make pottery, jewellery, and going to the antique markets and doing what we call truffle hounding. I work in further education as well, and I enjoy doing anything creative. At the moment, I'm really into decoupage and decorative paint techniques, and making and dressing Victorian dolls. And they'll be competing against the green team, cousins Gordon and Oliver Main. Hi, I'm Gordon Main, and this is my cousin and teammate, Oliver Main. I'm from Perth, and Gordon is from Linlithgow, and we are the green team. I enjoy relaxing by the canal basin, and I also help in running the Abbey Field home for the elderly. I look after my children and work here at home on my book on classic children's games from Scotland. I work for a large drinks company in Edinburgh. And in my spare time, I enjoy exploring the Perthshire countryside, biking, walking, and even sketching. Good morning, teams. Good morning, Lars Tharp. I'm pleased to see you're all looking so bright so early in the morning. Now, this antique market is going to open in about two minutes, so we've got to get our skates on. Now, today, what you're in search of is pottery and porcelain, a piece that you think has the potential to sell at a profit. I'm going to give you each 200 pounds. Thank you. Lars, what should they look out for? Decide what you want, uh, ask whether it's been restored or it's, it's uh, imperfect in any way, and then if you're going to go for it, haggle, haggle like mad. The doors are just about to open, so off you go. You've got 20 minutes and the best of luck. Away! much more your field than mine. Not really. People still setting up. This is yes. a brilliant time to be at a fair, actually see the stuff coming out of people's boxes. Somebody's unpacking china here. We might as oh, well yes. sit, have the first of it. Right. Gordon. That is quite impressive looking. Well, uh, that looks like a sort of a standard Asper Distra Bowl of the late 19th century. What's your absolute bottom in this one? The very best 110. Have you got anything really interesting, nice and decorative? Oh, oh right. That's fine, <laughs> That is, is quite that? fun, and it looks like George. King George IV, yes. Oh, yes, so it's a musical it's box. So. Made by Shelley. And the shape is, you know, classic, very stylish Shelley okay. shape. 280, that's too much, isn't it? Yeah. No, it's too no too definitely expensive. not. Definitely not. That's no issue. There's a little piece of quite late Moorcroft. Oh, look, well, there's a nice original paper label uh, potted to the Queen. The early designs are very highly sought after. Whatever you see. It's easy, isn't it? Oh, it is. Incredible. Busy, busy enough, I'm No. Oh, sorry. Perfect one. Charlotte Reed. Reed, a well known designer. It Charlotte isn't. Reed, it is. Oh, my God. Your favourite. Oh, God. Ah. I want it, I want it. Oh, <laughs> dangerous, dangerous time. Is this yours? If you've got a favourite, oh, then you're likely yeah, to be tempted dark. far more than Do you like would have been if you, couldn't, you were approaching couldn't it. Enormous amount to do that. She's, she's taken £75 off the bat. She's gone out at 200 in... She's, she must be operating a charity yeah, stall here. And it's perfect, isn't it? There's absolutely no damage, is there? Yes. But surely China yeah. wouldn't get rubbed. That's a decorative oh, it, plate. It, it, it does, especially where there is raised part of the design, there would be a, a rubbing, maybe, of certain parts. That now is that's, pretty. That is very, very nice. And it's got the impressed pool mark. 
bit you seem to be on the base. revving up about pool a bit. Is it well, your I thing? Well, I quite like it. Uh, no, it, I wouldn't say it was my thing, but I think it's stylish. A jug from a jug and basin set. Very nice swirly whirly on the bow motifs. Transfer printed. Where's the bowl? Is my question. You'd have to have a bowl with it. 85 squid because, as you say, it's 85 pounds. 85 for the jug and Again, I think that's a good shop window price. I'd like it. We've got a home territory here. They're really homing in on Scottish things. Thomas Good and Sons. Beautiful, beautiful. London Absolutely dealer with perfect. Weems, yes. Colours perfect. And uh, that is from Weems, is as it... beloved of the Queen Mother. Is that old or not old? Uh, I would say that's uh, early 20th century, but it's very badly damaged. Mm. Definitely not. Okay, okay, I'll be guided by you. Dollies? Oh, gosh, there's so much here. It's fantastic. You can't have dollies today. No. <laughs> Silicon, Dalton and... Dalton. Now, this is one of the most unsaleable items that Dalton ever made, silicon ware. What about this, Lynn? This is a perfect piece of Shelley. I don't know anything about Shelley. It's a lovely little piece of Worcester. It's quite a 65 pounds garden. Right, isn't that lovely? Look at the painting, the delicacy. Look at the way it flows out there. Five petals. What would you do with it? it? You put it on the mantelpiece and ooh and ah over it. Would you really? Yes. On its own? Preferably a pair. Absolutely right. It's got a good roughness in the base as well. Gordon seems to have yeah. eyes for pool. Compared to the more modern pieces. What do you reckon? We go for that. I think, I think. Seriously. We'll make a decision, yes. Gordon's tempted. Time. OK, do I get a good feel with this? <laughs> They're quite professional in their yes. approach, these guys, yes. aren't they? I imagine the stall holder is worried. 60. 60. 65 is the best. 65 is the best. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's a good buy at that. 65 would be acceptable. OK. Yeah. 60 is better. No, 65 would be much better for Merck. Well, 60 is better <laughs> for me, yeah, 65. 65. 65. 65, God. I think, yeah, the, the man has to make a living. That's true. <laughs> well, we have a we've got to make oh, a oh, this oh, is dear. so difficult. Um, There's so many nice things. Figures. Right, figures. figures. Right, one last look, one and then, last look. then right. we can and make decisions. a decision. Yes, we'll make um, a decision. I know there's a lot of fakery of this stuff, and some of it's quite good. A Staffordshire flat uh, back, and that tells you why it's called a flat back. Flat as a pancake on the back, designed to stand on a, on a mantelpiece. Oh, I do hope she hasn't sold okay. that other one. If what she has, we're, we're stuffed. We're, stuffed. we're absolutely rogered, oh, yeah. we won't have anything to sell. Whether the wear's going to put people off, I don't know, but it's... It's... <laughs> smart, it's crown ducal. You can talk about yes. Lucy Wee you know about things and we haven't got any more time <laughs> that, that is very true that is, that is very true when it comes down right. to it kissing goodbye <laughs> there we are what do you make of it Lars? well it's a very very typical 1930s design these very jolly colors charlotte reed is a great designer wonderful design this is it's rather unusual to have all of these colors in it quite a lot of black what did you think of the light in there it's rather it poor. Was a bit, it was yes. a bit poor, yes. wasn't it? There's more yes. wear on it than we than thought. We thought. Mm. More wear. Mm. It's actually been broken. <gasps> no. I'm afraid it has. Oh, no. And uh, I hate to tell you this, but you might as well know now, there's quite a bit of restoration painted into here. Oh. And there's a bit of restoration painted into there. So uh, if you're really lucky, it's only been in two pieces. Uh, but uh, it's possible it might have been in more. It's possible that they didn't know either, but uh, I'm afraid it, it's going to have a big bearing on the prize. Oh, well. Well, we'll keep our fingers crossed for you. You never know, do you? Let's see Oliver and Gordon's vase close up. Looks great to me, but who am I to say? <laughs> this is made by Pool Pottery, Carter, Stabler and Adams down on the south coast. There's no damage on it, I'm glad to say. I think that should stand a good chance, a very decorative object. Well, there are no points for these items yet. That all depends on how well they sell at the auction at the end of the programme. In the meantime, we're off to Birmingham's famous jewellery quarter. As any jeweller will tell you, people often just walk in off the street unannounced to ask for a piece of jewellery to be valued for sale. Now, in this game, we've asked three amateur actors each to bring a piece of jewellery into a shop where, for 90 points, our contestants must examine it, decide what it's made from, where it dates from, and vitally, what it's worth. Good morning. Hello. 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 How can we help you? I've acquired these rather bizarrely, and I just wondered if you could perhaps put oh, an age gosh. on them and a price. All right. Um, they look like costume jewellery to me. I mean, Correct. Uh, Lovely to hear the word. If, you know, if you've got perhaps um, 
A little black dress? Yes, they haven't got what's called a claw setting. I mean, sometimes you find stones, these yes, are very yes, tiny, yes. you know, on, yes, on the yeah, rings yeah, that we have, right. like you've yeah. got there, um, yes. with a claw setting. I don't think you've got real diamonds, I hate to tell you. Good. <laughs> oh, <laughs> bad luck. Though, wouldn't it? But I don't think they're real diamonds, otherwise oh. they'd be worth a, a lot of money. Certainly mm. pre-war. Oh. Ooh, that's the first slight blip. They're not really pre-war. Yeah, that's possibly, that's They're really post-war. When costume jewellery came in, you know, with the um, the Duchess of Windsor. Fashionable? Quite. Reasonably so. Yes, I mean, this retro stuff is, is popular. Retro. Excellent. Good, good word, use of it. word, yep. Is it? 100. Maybe about 80 pounds? Yes. Very good. 70 to 80. Oh, Very well, impressive. Nice to have. Very impressive. Well, they appear to be a cluster of small diamonds surrounded by... Nicely cut rubies. Ooh, no. 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 So that's what they appear to be. Gives with one hand, takes mm. that with the other. It looks like a stainless steel mount. No, it's not stainless steel. I think it's just a base metal. Good. And if that is the case, then I really doubt if the stones are real. Very good. So oh, showing that they're metal mounts would suggest oh, no. that they're only set with fake stones. I think these are what was commonly known as costume jewellery. Period, Gordon, this is more your I field. I would think it looks very Art Deco-ish from about Art the Deco. 1930s. No, he's yeah. probably 15, 20 years out. Three to four hundred? I would think... As high as that? I would think three to four hundred is maybe a little high. Two to three hundred, I would have said. Maybe in the next five or six years' time, but at the moment, I think, really, we're looking loosely at around about 75 to 100 pounds. Oh, well. really? Good morning. Hello. Hello. Um, what have you got for us? Well, my grandmother died a couple of months ago when we'd been clearing out the house, and uh, inside a bureau we found a secret compartment that had been locked away all these years. How exciting. And uh, in it there were a load of love letters, and we also Ooh. found this necklace. Oh, oh isn't that so? And earrings mm. as well. Yes, we've got obviously a very romantic theme here. And of course, it was very much the fashion to have these classical scenes on cameos. Neoclassical. Start of the 19th century, a revivalist period where things were made in the classical themes of classical Greece. Date, I would think, around about hmm, 1890. Yeah, Victorian, yes. Victorian. Victorian. Well, Victorian English would suggest, I mean, it's actually, yes, 19th century. So if we were going to give it a value? I think as it's very pretty, we could be talking about... 650, 700. Disappointing. Disappointing. This is a very nice set, isn't it? Necklace and earrings in cameo with... Well, now, we've got the magic word cameo. That's fundamental number one. At a first glance, I would say this is... must date from 1800. Very good. 1800's good. What is very the impressive. Date? 1820, probably. I would say this is certainly gold, round the cameos. Correct. The chain, I'm not too sure. No, I don't think the chain is gold. Why not? It's all right. But there's something... Yes, in something fact, you can not see changes of colour oh. in the chain. You get old gold that can be quite dark in colour. You oh, Different colours of gold. Red gold, pink gold, yellow gold, white gold, mm. green gold. I think it's French. French. I think it is gold. Mm, good, it's gold, but it's probably it's Italian. Italian. I'm going to say 1850. Oh. 1850, 1860. 1850-60, they seem to have revised their opinion. Sad, sad, sad. They were right. And value, I would think, would be 15 to 2. 1,500 to 2,000 pounds, tickety-boo. Tickety-boo! Tickety-boo! Good morning. Hello. Hello. Would How you can we could, um, value this for me, please? Oh, right. Oh. oh, what's that? What is it? Right, let's have a look. Gosh. Oh, yes. Where did you get it from? A card game, actually. <laughs> Card game, you yeah. say. Uh, a chap couldn't match the amount he'd put up, and he seemed to put this up instead. Well, well, what um, did he put it up against, actually? 500. It would be nice for them to be diamonds, wouldn't it? Oh. Is that what you're hoping? Mm -hmm. I actually don't think they are. Oh, I no. Good very, very good quality diamond. Good quality lead crystal. It just doesn't occur to doesn't her that they could be right. The setting is, Which... is rather... 30s, I think. 1830s or 1930s? So 1930s. Set in silver. Correct. The silver setting. I think probably you did rather well for a, um, a swap for 500 there. Oh my goodness gracious me! What for crystal? Well, I suppose if it's crystal. 300, 300 was more attractive probably. to me. How much? 200 even more attractive. <laughs> <laughs> They've made a complete mess of it. There's absolutely nothing positive that one could say about this interview. It's very, very disappointing. 
At a first glance, it appears to be a necklace and a bracelet. Bracelet, thank you. Of diamonds in white gold, perhaps. Do you think they're good diamonds or genuine? I think they're a girl's best friend, you mean? Well, at a first glance, I would say I doubt if they're genuine, but they could be. Yes. The setting certainly doesn't look modern. I don't feel it's a particularly good setting. There's not, not quite the quality there to be looking for in a piece if these were real diamonds. Oh, my goodness me! The old Georgian Regency settings were quite frequently these simplified cut-down mounts in silver mm. and gold. The finesse was in having all these stones to match in. Mm. I think they are, in fact, paste. They've gone off the boil, They've there, gone they? off the boil. Rather why, oh, why? piece of costume jewellery, 1910. They could not be further yes, off the mark, I'm afraid. I would value that at 100 to 150. Well, they are as tragically incorrect, I'm afraid, as their counterparts. I thought they had a feel for it, but I was wrong. John, the moment we've all been waiting for, the scores. Mm, well, some stimulating comments from both sides, some <laughs> of which were very precise, some of which were way off the mark, I'm afraid. <laughs> we started off with these clips. But around about £100 maximum is fine. The cameo set made at the start of the 19th century, not at the end of the 19th century. As far as the value is concerned, though, spot on. This, you were both dramatically off the mark. <laughs> it was distressing experience watching you both. Um, it's diamonds. They're not lead crystal, they're not paste, they're the real McCoy. A diamond Riviere necklace of graduated stones, lovely stones, foil-backed, with closed back collet settings in silver and gold. We value diamonds according to the weight in carats. Well, the total weight in carats of this is something in the region of 60 carats of goods. Uh, they are worth, in a sale room, at least £1,000 a carat. You're talking about £60,000. So the suggestion of £100 to £300 was terrifying. <laughs> so on balance, I would have to say that the red team actually were a little bit more precise and gave a little bit more facts and figures. Okay. So I'm going to award 45 for the red team and 40 for the green team. Now that's what I call arriving in magnificent style. The West Midlands is home to the British motor industry and has a tradition for producing world beating bikes like BSA, Norton and Triumph. Now, Simon Bull is maybe better known as a watches and clocks expert, but Simon, you've got a bit of a passion for motorcycles too. Yes, not usually this old, I have to say. It's quite an experience to drive. It's a 1925 Norton. It has a separate timing, separate fuel, separate clutch, a hand change like a car gearbox, acetylene lamps and a Zeppelin sidecar. <laughs> I can see why it's called that. Now, would you be able to recognise a classic motorcycle if you found one rusty and neglected in an old barn or garage? We've got three bikes, and what we want them to do is give each bike a make, a date, and a value. There are 90 points at stake, and the green team are going first. Oh, wow. Right. This is this nice. nice yes, yes, yes. Looks about 1950. Smell it, smell it. Yes, it's a smell triumph, it. beautiful. Triumph motorbike. Do we happen to know what model? It's a two-seater model. Let's not get too technical. That's got to be a 250 twin, 300 twin. Oh, no, it's more than that. 350. Date, right, 1950. If you think it's 1950, I'm going to put 1949, because it's a particularly special year for me. Don't right. ask why. 1949. I'd put a value on this at about £1,800. I was going to say 1500 so let's give it 15 to 2. Right. Ah, yes. Into the swinging 60s with this one, I think. A BSA. BSA. Birmingham Small Arms. This is a beast. This I is think a big, it is. A big beast. A bigger engine. It's certainly bigger, but uh, well, I, don't I wouldn't know. go much beyond six, seven hundred. So, 7.50. I think this model would have been first built late 50s, early 60s. I think it's mid 60s. No, I still stick with 1960. Value. I would go for a range 1200 to 1500. Two down, one to go. One to go. Right, an Indian bike. This is the original. With beacon. butterfly handlebars swept well back, a leather seat. Very classy chassis this machine has. Rates along with Harley Davidson and these American things. A 500cc model. 
One of these cylinders themselves looks like a 500. So we're putting the V2. That's right, it's a V, a V engine. I've been obviously. telling you that since the beginning. You have, all right. How would we date this? We'll go for a specific year, 1921. So in terms of valuation, seven to eight thousand pounds. I'm for happy this with that type of machine. Oh well, this is pretty impressive. Like, this is just what we wanted. <laughs> oh gosh, just my stuff. Um, wow, well, how did we start? Uh, well, it's a triumph, Lynn. It's a triumph. It says so here. And there? <laughs> and fifties? I would have thought so. Fifty-five. <laughs> okay, I was going to say fifty-six. So let's have okay. nineteen fifty-five. Ah, oh, CCs and all that sort of oh, stuff. Oh gosh, yes. Seven fifty. All right then. Value. Two thousand. I was going to mm. say that. Yes, good. Oh, we are in agreement on this one. Okay, let's go and see what see else they've got next. next. Oh. <laughs> ah. Right, this is pretty now, wonderful. This is a real Birmingham piece of memorabilia oh, because right. it's the BSA company, which stands for Birmingham Small Arms. A bit more sophisticated, so I would have thought yes. later. It's got this lovely red yes. and gold colouring. I would have thought typical of the... 60s? 60s. That was a nice year in 1960. 1962, Lindsay. CCs? Well, we could go for 750. Yeah? Yeah. This sort of style would be very fashionable oh, nowadays. Indeed. Very beautiful indeed. for posing mm. in the King's Road. Ah, uh, three? I'll go with that. OK, that's our verdict on that. Let's have a look at this one. Oh, wow. Oh, this is, yes. This is stunning. Look, it's, it's based on a carriage. It's got the same mountings as you find on the really old prams. And these wonderful handlebars. It's a bit like those American ones. What, you mean an um, Easy Rider thing? Easy Rider type, yeah. And I don't know if Indian is a make. A make. No. Or a style. I don't know. It must be a make, I, I guess. I mean, are we talking Bertie Worcester or are we talking earlier? 1900, 1905? I don't know why I like the sound of 1905. Should we try yes. that? Let's try that. They weren't very powerful oh, at this no, stage. No. 250? 225. 225. That's nice uneven. <laughs> All we need is a price. 3,250. Well, Simon, how did they both do? Well, not badly at all. It's very difficult. It is, in fact, a triumph, <laughs> uh, and it's known as a Tiger 100. As far as date's concerned, in fact, the green team were much better. On the CC, you were both wrong. It's actually 499, 500 CC. And although you were closer with 350, I'm going to give it to the ladies, and I'll tell you why. The speedo goes up to 120 miles an hour. It's a big twin, and at that date, because you've got the date right, you would have been pushing to get 120 mile an hour speedo on a bike with a 350cc engine. In fact, at the Tiger 100, it was called the 100 because it did 100 miles an hour. And on value, you're both right, actually. It's 1,800 to 2,000 pounds. So I'm going to score it equally, 25 apiece. That's very Thank good, you. out of 30 marks. I think that's pretty impressive. <laughs> this is handsome, isn't it? Well, it's getting very difficult. Um, they both got it right, BSA, Birmingham Small Arms Company, both mentioned that. It's known as the Super Rocket. CCs, well, 650 it is. The date, well, again, you're both almost perfectly right, because this particular bike is 1958, and then we come down to value. But it's actually two to two and a half, which means we have, in my opinion, an equal score, 25 <laughs> out of 30 each, <laughs> all decided on the last bike. Let's go and see the next right. bike. Well, I thought this might be the decider. Uh, this is an Indian chief. They were introduced, this particular model, in 1922, and this one is 1923. It's a V-twin, as you've rightly said. What I was looking for was the American connection, which the Greens got. You nearly got there at one point. You were, you were taking up the Harley-Davidson driving position. Finally, the value. You've gone for 7 to 8, and you've gone for 3 to 50. In fact, it's, this condition is probably 4 to 5. So there, the Reds have it. But just by a bit, of, I have to score for the Greens, 25. To 20. So it's neck and neck with 115 points to each team. The Barbe Institute in the grounds of the University of Birmingham is one of the world's finest yet least known small galleries. It contains works by Van Gogh, Gainsborough, Rembrandt, Degas, Gauguin, Whistler. It goes on and on. They're all here. Now, in this next game, we want our contestants to become tour guides. We want the teams to talk through three paintings that we've selected. There are 90 points on offer, and picture expert Mark Poultimore and I are going to watch them from a discreet distance. The first painting we're looking at today is a rather fine portrait, and it is, in fact, of the artist Degas. These, these chaps worked really fast, 
and he got it down and he captured it and he said, yes, that's it. I, th I think I'd go with about uh, 1910, just maybe a little bit before. Slightly earlier, I think. Yeah, yeah, slightly earlier than 18, that. 1880. For such a, a large and magnifique uh, mm. piece of French art, Impressionist art, I would uh, have thought um, two, three million. One to one and a half. This is an interesting painting. Um, some people have said that they think it's actually unfinished. Of course, at the time, um, it was very much the new technique to have this very, very lively, vibrant, uh, impressionistic style. The person who painted it, Lindsay, is, we think... It, it could be Sisley. Yes, we, we think, think it is Sisley. And by the way, it was a self-portrait. Value. Um, <laughs> this is difficult. A historical piece. It's, it's almost as memorable as some of the do you does. think? At least. At least. <laughs> I'll yeah. go for half a million yes. as, as a round <laughs> figure. Well, Mark, what's the truth? Who is it and who's it by? Well, it's by Edward Manet, who's without doubt the greatest of the Impressionists. And it's a portrait of a not particularly well-known painter called Carolus Duran. What they did very well was explain the picture. So the critical question is always, what's it worth? I, I would have thought at least two to three million pounds if it came onto the open market. Let's, let's lead into it gently, shall we? And of course, the subject matter is in fact the marriage of Cana of Galilee, where Jesus turned the water into wine. The lady here and gentleman here, in my opinion, are the people who commissioned the painting. The main focus of light is in the centre here, the patrons. It's a rather wonderful technique that's been used, the sort of different shades of darkness in the background. It really draws you in very deep. This is Italian. It's <laughs> mid-17th century, about, about 1650. I wonder if you could tell us the name of the artist. Goodness me, sorry, I'm forgetting my manners. This is by Tintoretto. What would you think it's worth, this picture? Three, maybe even three and a half million. Here we are, ladies and gentlemen, in front of a very, very large, grand and impressive uh, painting of the 18th century. And the story, as I'm sure you've recognised, is the turning of the water into wine. All the little artefacts to do with eating and drinking are obviously contemporary with the painting and not a representation of the accurate historical period. I... Uh, mm. Italian. Yes. I have a leaning for Raphael, but my yes. colleague here is, well, is not convinced. I, could be. How much would a work like this fetch at auction? Um, <laughs> it's lottery money. Um, I would have thought millions. Yes. Well, the greens were uh, just brilliant. But having said that, the picture is by, by an artist called Murillo, who is a, a, one of the great, great painters of the 17th century in Spain. The reds didn't get it quite so perfect, but again, they, they used their brains and they actually looked at the picture. I liked the way they discussed the, the contemporary prop, so to speak, in the picture. But they panicked at the crucial moment, the date of the picture. They said 18th century which is wrong, it's 17th century. Mm. It's very difficult to put a value on this. If you push me, I would say three to five million, but I could be considerably more. So, the third and last, 18th century English school. And I actually find this painting quite amusing because you can imagine the story, oh no, old Henry's gone and ruined the hunt again. He's gone and hurt his knee. <laughs> Poor old Henry, he always does this. Quite a fun picture, this. I feel that this is a stubs. What is it worth? Mm. If you were to buy something like that for yourself, sir, you'd have to be looking at about a million pounds. Yes, I would say slightly more on the conservative side, about 800,000 pounds. Yeah. Well, here we are at the third of our paintings and another rather spectacular example of an earlier era. Interesting colours too. Um, a lot of warmth down at this end. I think it's Dutch. Um, but, um, on the other hand, I wouldn't like to stake my life on it. <laughs> <laughs> no, we do hope not. The costumes will remind you of the period of uh, King Charles II, and so we would date that as being the 17th century. Mm. Who painted it? Uh, somebody somebody Dutch school. Somebody whose middle name was Van. <laughs> 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 How much would you say this is worth? Oh, million pounds? Beyond half a million, certainly. Yes. Well, that was a triumphant performance, yet another triumphant performance. But, Mark, will you put us into the picture? What exactly is this? Well, it's Dutch. It's painted in 1660, and it's by a Dutch artist called Albert Kuyp. 
So the girls were fantastically good. Well, you didn't actually get the artist right. Gentlemen, well, I think you said it was English. It's absolutely not English. It's, it's Dutch through and through this picture. You were pretty hot on the value. I think you said around one million, something like that. I think Gordon said 800,000, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Even better. Mm -hmm. I mean, you were spot on. But the girls also, ladies, you did fantastically well. You got that right as well. Mark, how are your maths? We gave the ladies a total of 55 out of 90. And the gentlemen, just a little bit more, 60 out of 90. <laughs> So, as we enter the final all-important auction round, there are only five points in it. As well as selling the items bought at St Martin's Market, they're each selling another two items which they've chosen from a selection we've provided. Judy and Lindsay have chosen a Wedgwood coronation mug, bought for £75, and a Carlton Ware vase, bought for £60. Gordon and Oliver have chosen a Brangwyn Ware vase, bought for £50, and a Royal Worcester figure, bought for £60. With so much resting on the auction, nerves are tingling. Lindsay and Gordon have decided to take the rostrum, and happily, Lars Tharp is back to offer them some essential advice. So keep your eyes open. Always look cheerful. Remember, this is a real auction, and our teams will get one point for every pound profit they make, but lose one point for every pound lost. So they've really got to get those bids flowing. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Lindsay, and this is my helper here, Judy. We're going to start off with lot number 62, which is a Wedgwood Queen Elizabeth II coronation mug. Very This collected. is quite a sort of object. So shall we start this one off at £40? Thank you, sir. 45, 50, 55, 60, 65. I think 70, the chap standing is bidding up a commission. 80, a commission on behalf of someone who isn't able to be in the room. 90, 95, thank you, madam. New bid at the back. 100, 105, 110, 115, 120, 125, 130. Any more bids? Going to sell at 130 then, if there are no more bids. Going, going, gone at 130. Well, they made 55 points there, three, which is a pretty good start. A Carlton Ware tapering baluster vase. We'll it's got a, a great deal of going for it. In terms of colour, it's really a flashy, okay, lovely 20 object. 20, then. 20, thank you, sir. 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45 at the back, 50, 55, 60. 60 at the front with the gentleman. Any more bids? Going, going, at 60. Gone. Well, they've broken lastly, even there. Lot number 67, which is a Charlotte Reed charger. Yes, now this is the piece which we sadly discovered was restored. There's some restoration on this piece. So who'll start me at 60 for this one? Thank you, 60, sir. 65, 70, 75. 75 at the back. Any more bids? It makes a lovely, lovely Christmas present. And thank you, sir. 80 at the back there. Any more on 80? OK, going at 80. Gone. Well, they went down a colossal 120 points on that piece they bought. So sadly, their score is now less than it was when they went into the auction. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Gordon, and this is my teammate, Oliver. They're both here from Bonnie, Scotland. The first lot that we have for sale is lot number 61, which is a Brangwen Ware vase. Who will start me at 35? 35 I have. 40. 45. 50. 55. 60. 65. 70. 75. It's always 80, nice when the first piece sells well. I think it gives a lot 90, of confidence to the 95, amateur auctioneer. Any advance on 95? 100? 110? 120? 130? 140? 150? 160? Any advance on 160? All done at 160. Sold. The Terrific. They've put 110 points on their score. 
a Royal Durster model of April by Doherty. Who will start me for this piece at 30? 30 at the front, lady. Thank you. 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, 100. In advance on 100, the bid is with you, madam, at the front. All done at 100. 100? Well, they've made 40 points. They're really roaring on, these chaps. It is a 1930s pool pottery vase. It, it would seem that Birmingham is, is flush with pool. Uh, there was a, an awful lot of it at the fair. On 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. Any advance on 50? So you, madam, near the pillar. Any advance on 50? No advance on 50? All done at 50. Thank you all for your hospitality. Well, I can now announce the winners of this week's Great Antiques Hunt. We've got 105 points for the red team, but the winners are the green team with 310. Oh. Very well done. Very well done. Well done. Well done. <laughs> Very good. Our consolation prize is this special edition Great Antiques Hunt plate, definitely an Thank antique you. of the future. Lovely. Meanwhile, the winners come with me to choose your prize from the top table. <laughs> Stick that sort of glow to your cheeks. Really triumphant. Well done and a triumph for the boys. Anyway, on to the prize. The first part of your prize is £200 worth of antiques vouchers. I'm going to hold on to them to leave your hands free for the next part of your prize, which is laid out over there, but no peeping. A table laid with six antiques, five worth two to four hundred pounds, and one, the star prize, worth a thousand pounds. But you only have 30 seconds to take your pick, and it starts now. That's not, not mad. Not mad. I don't know what it is. It's nice to choose like That's hmm? maybe getting to the right sort of price. You reckon? Range. Nice geometric one. What is it? Grace Pottery. Susan, Susie Cooper. Susie Cooper. This is my worst moment of my whole job, is having to tell you your time's up. So what's it to be? Big is beautiful. We're going for this. Well, it's a wonderful piece of Canton export lacquer, made in Canton around 1820, 1840, and it's a really very, very nice object. But in terms of value, uh, this is worth maybe a good £400. The actual prize piece, in terms of money, is this rather splendid piece of Paris porcelain. Paris. This was made in Paris sometime around 1820, 1830, and it's probably worth somewhere getting on £4,000. But that's a nice thing. Yes, Actually, I think it's a most beautiful box. You've done very well. Now, I'm afraid that's all we've got time for this week, but if you'd like to take part in our next series as a contestant, please write to us at The Great Antiques Hunt, P.O. Box 229, Bristol BS 99 7JN. And don't forget, you must watch next week for our Christmas special. It's gorgeous, isn't it? I like and it. next week's programme is at the earlier time of 5.15.